All right, welcome back to Soccer Matters on ESPN 97.5. Hey, let me tell you about two good watching places for, you know, whether it's Major League Soccer, the Dynamo Dash, uh, it's the Premier League, the Serie A. One is FM Kitchen and Bar, two locations, one near Montrose and Westheimer. That's the new location. And then the other one, which is my favorite, north of Washington on Shepherd. It's FM Kitchen and Bar. They've got an outdoor patio area, tons of monitors. You go in there, you ask for your game. Also, you get the craft cocktails, great burgers, voted number one by the Houston Press, and also great chicken sandwiches. And then Hugh O'Connor's Pub out on uh, I-10, uh, near the Marquee Entertainment Center, home of the Liverpool Supporters Group. Get out there, go out there and say hello to David, go out there and say hello to Peter. Hugh O'Connor's Pub, they got great, great food out there, bangers and mash I recommend, and all the great tap beer and whiskey offerings. All right, with that, we bring in the president of the Houston Dynamo. He is John Walker. He joins us now. John, uh, times have been busy for you. Thank you very much to make a little time for us here on the radio. Absolutely, Glenn. Happy to do it, and good to see you. Always good to see you, and I know you've uh, been involved in a number of things. I guess I want to just start off with the pretty monumental announcement with the collective bargaining agreement coming to terms. Uh, with the NWSL players and the league. I know you worked heavily on that. Maybe a little bit of insight into that. Uh, we've seen a lot of the nice things that have come out of that, increased salaries, et cetera. So maybe your just thoughts on that overall for the women's game. No, it's, it's fantastic for the, for the league and, and for women's professional soccer in this country uh, to reach that first you know, collective bargaining deal with the Players Association. I was fortunate enough to be uh, asked to participate uh, at the beginning of October. Uh, we, we put an awful lot of time into it. There were three or four of us from around the league who stepped in to help from an ownership perspective and trying to create a, a platform for, for women um, w- with improved, uh, you know, increases in pay, improved standards, and, and just a, a path forward to make women's professional soccer all that can, it can be in this country. And so uh, we took it to the wire, you know, training camp started yesterday and we, we were only able to reach a, a, an agreement uh, over the weekend. Um, but uh, that's how it goes in conversations like that. As you know, there's some back and forth and it can take a little longer than you hope, but uh, we got it over the line. That's the good news. And now it, uh, it's all about them uh, rolling the ball out there and, and scoring goals. Now, having played in leagues that were on shaky standing back in the 80s and, and uh, you know, there was the thoughts of uh, a league going under, teams going under constantly, you went and joined other teams, leagues reformed, uh, they tried to find new investment from owners. Where do you see the NWSL right now as far as its, its footing? Is it a firm footing now? Do you feel better about it now with this agreement? Where do you see it right now? Yeah, I think I think the you know the agreement is just one sort of tent pole um, that provides great footing for the league. I think the other is is the the increasing um, desire uh, to participate in the league from you know different ownership groups uh, who, who've come in and, and uh, the the notion of expansion. You know, this coming season we'll be adding two franchises, one in Los Angeles, one in San Diego, and there are you know there are other conversations going on. Ted Siegel, our our controlling owner is on the expansion committee for NWSL and they're, they're fielding incoming calls about wanting to join the league uh, from cities around uh, around North America. And so I think that, that that's another one. Um, this, you know, two years ago during the, the Challenge Cup, uh, a new media rights deal with uh, CBS uh, was struck uh, and we're, we're sort of in the middle of that. But in the middle of those contracts, you start having conversations about extensions and I think that's going well. Uh, so I think there are a lot of leading indicators there that that would suggest that it's it's a growing league, it's going to be a thriving league, and and we're excited to be a part of it. I get the expansion piece, and I, and I think people talk a lot about that with Major League Soccer too, because it's incredible how fast it's expanded. I, I get that as an interest, but is there a worry in your mind about it maybe expanding too fast without making it a little bit more viable in a lot of markets that need it, including Houston? Yeah, you're, you're right. And I, and I would say that there, there's been an awful lot of thoughtful uh, discussion about that uh, within the NWSL board and among the current owners. You know, there's also this notion of, you know, the dilution of the talent pool. Um, and so you want to make sure you don't do that. Uh, and I think it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be measured. It's going to be slow. Um, this is not going to be a 30 team league in the next couple of years. Um, it's going to be 12 in 2022. Uh, whether or not we add one or two more in the next couple of years is still open for debate. 
Um, but I think we're going to be thoughtful. The owners, you know, they have a good mindset. There's some really, really talented folks among the NWSL ownership. You have the Wilfs who came in who own the Vikings and now Orlando, um, Orlando City, the folks in Portland, you know, who do such a great job with the, with the Timbers and the Thorns uh, are very active and vocal in conversations about the future of the league and the new teams as well. Um, Angie Long in Kansas City and Julie Ehrman in, in uh, Los Angeles with Angel City. I mean, they they have a, a, a real great vision for what they hope this league will be as well. And um, so there's, there's some great talent and they'll be thoughtful about it. John Walker, Dynamo president. Okay. Well, one of the other big pieces in the off season, we've had a lot of really great things happening under 23 team. We finally have a reserve team here. This is going to open so many doors. Um, Ted Siegel has added a technical director position, something the Dynamo have never had. This is investment. The designated player was Sebastian Ferreira, Sebas, uh, who is also on this show. Um, so a lot of great things happening, including the Fubo deal. And I'm just going to step back and let you kind of tell the fan base about the Fubo deal and what that means for both the Dynamo and Fubo. Yeah. So as, as m most of your listeners, I think, you know, probably know Fubo TV is a, is a streaming service uh, where you can find a lot of different sporting events. Um, and, and we're really happy that this coming season and for seasons to come, you know, Dynamo fans will be able to stream our matches via Fubo TV. Uh, we're very close to announcing a local broadcast partner uh, who, will, who will produce those games. Um, and so I can't tell you exactly where on Fubo TV yet you'll be able to find it. But if you're a Fubo TV subscriber, you'll be able to stream Dynamo matches this coming season. So you might be so, able to figure it out where it's going to be. Too, yeah, you, right? you might be able to figure you might that be out. Able to, by the way, I have Fubo. Yeah, stay tuned yeah. for that. But, uh, you know, I think for us, you know, that kind of partner with that kind of reach from a streaming perspective, you know, certainly it ticks a box there. But the financial investment that they're making in the club over the next several years is money that can be used to help improve the stadium, help to, uh, you know, with, with uh, acquiring players on the pitch um, and just improving everything that we do. So it's, it's, a, it's a hefty commitment to us. And, and it's predicated largely on the, this notion that the state of Texas, you know, in the near term uh, will legalize sports betting and you will be able to bet um, via uh, a sports betting app, hopefully Fubo, um, uh, on any sporting event around the world. And you know, over 30 states in the United States have already legalized that. Um, we had a legislative session in 2021 where all of the sports teams participated in some lobbying efforts to get it presented in the House. Uh, didn't quite make it through the House, uh, but we're optimistic for the next legislative session. Um, and, you know, Fubo is in the sports betting business in other states, and, uh, you know, they would be our partner once that becomes legal in Texas. John Walker, Dynamo president. This is tremendous information. Last one before I let you go. The Houston Dash now have a president. Again, this is more resources. This takes some pressure off the head coach, James Clarkson. This allows you to focus on different things. And Jessica O'Neill comes in from the NFL Charlotte franchise and also Charlotte FC. She's been working, preparing them for their inaugural season in Major League Soccer. Uh, just some thoughts on that. And, and again, what this symbolizes under Ted yeah. Siegel. Yeah, I think, you know, when Ted came in and acquired the club and, and we were discussing opportunities, you know, we certainly think that the da there's a tremendous opportunity with the dash. And, and when it comes to the business side, uh, you know, we have a lot of shared resources here in, in the club, myself included, uh, where I bounce from Dash to, to Dynamo to, to stuff at the stadium. And to have somebody dedicated to the Dash full time is what it deserves uh, and what it needs to be able to maximize it for, for our fans, for our players, um, and I think for the, ci for the city of Houston as well. So it, it's a tremendous addition for us. Jessica, is a, she's a bright and very energetic uh, young professional who is really eager to get started and uh, she had a press conference earlier today and and knocked it out of the park um, I spent some good time with her about a month ago she came into town and we we drove around I showed her the facilities and, and we talked we talked sports and we talked sports business and um, she'll be a, a tremendous asset to our club John as always a great update thank you so much uh, by the way we've seen some great ticket pricing now also for the Dynamo that's very, very economical, great value that fans should jump on. I'm sure you had a big piece in that. So congratulations on that effort as well. And as always, thank you very much for coming on the program. We always appreciate your transparency. Glenn, happy to do it anytime. And then make sure your listeners know that we're, we're rolling it out on February 27th at 6 o'clock over at uh, PNC Stadium. So hope to see everybody there.
Yeah, your commentators are getting in shape too. We're ready. We're 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 working the vocal cords cords a little bit, and we're we're excited about it as well. John, thank you very much. Great stuff. Thanks, Glenn. All right, that's President John Walker of the Houston Dynamo. You heard him there on a number of things, including the Fubo deal, the collective bargaining deal, and the new hiring of Jessica O'Neill to be the president of the Houston Dash. Uh, this uh, segment brought to you by uh, Advantage BMW in Midtown. Get in a five series, get in a three series, seven series, X5, whatever you want. You go down there, you ask for Justin or Steven. It's Advantage BMW in Midtown. They're going to take you through sales, service, finance. It can be done really, really easy. Uh, and by the way, they're big soccer fans. Um, that's the other thing. Justin and Steven have attended uh, Dynamo games and international games as well. We'll take a break. We got more to come.